job better and easier and all that other stuff, you know. And uh, it's really interesting. I just, you know, see people try all the time, well, you know, to cut people's wages. Oh, good, well, you just quit. Oh, good, I'll just put somebody else on really cheap. Oh, great, save money that way. Well, you don't want to save money. You know what? You want to spend more to make more, right? That's the way I, I look at it sometimes. You know? yeah, yeah, common sense, you know. <laughs> Um, besides um, acting work, um, do you do any voice work or narration, or are you just... Well, I've done a lot of stuff. I work for a thing called the, um, um, it's sort of like the National Film Board, um, which is the, um, at one time was like the number one um, supplier of that animation in the world, and did a, a couple of things that were nominated for Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of them called Play School, I think. And, um, uh, so and I'm, I've worked and I've written some of those and um, I do a lot of cartoons and uh, things like that. I, like I can't remember the little Bucky O'Hare and what else did I do? The little Pony and um, what, what else did I do? My God, um, uh, I can't even remember the, so much stuff. Dragon the Tales or something or I don't know any of the stuff. There's just so, so many, uh, you know. I did RoboCop for a while. That was a cartoon, and mm-hmm. uh, that's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing that voice. It's great. You don't have to shave or nothing. You wear your old jeans. You can go to work. And you just got to be there and be and be the voice of the character. You know, so it, it was a lot of fun. So I enjoy that. I did a lot of commercials, and um, I did a lot of plays. I really enjoy uh, directing and also acting in plays on in the theater. Mm-hmm. That's a whole different kind of thing. It's different than being on film, but then both of them are really enjoyable, you know. Yeah. And so you've done a, done it all, huh? You've done theater, film. Well, you, look, you know, I haven't, I haven't done a major dance. I'm not, but I do do, I, one thing I really do enjoy is I do a lot of musicals. I've mm-hmm. had a chance to be in things. I was in the the second version of Hairspray, I think, that ever played in North America. Mm-hmm. It was after that. Uh, what's them opening up on on Broadway? And uh, I was in the Canadian version. We were, the, I think, the second company. And I've done um, the producers and the Town and uh, uh, the Trousy Shop and a lot of musicals. You know, I, I just really, as you get older, I just, was just recently doing um, Andrew Lloyd Webber did a new version of uh, Wizard of Oz. Yeah. And traveled uh, all across the states um, and performed that uh, in there. And that was really an enjoyable experience because Wizard of Oz is an is a important thing to, I think, to, especially in Americans, right? Because you grew up with that. That's, that's a fable that, you know, that is totally American and, you know, yeah. it's really important, you know, somewhere with a rainbow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just, um, I, um, I've seen you in a lot of things, as I said, um, Stargate, um, I'm just, I'm mentioning a few of your, um, movies you've been in, I've seen you in, and I've enjoyed it, Stargate, and, um, Double Jeopardy, you were the lawyer in Double Jeopardy. Oh, Double Jeopardy, yeah, I ended up calling that the future chick, (laughs) that was, that was one of those movies that the director thought, you know, no one's gonna see this movie, no one wants it, end up being a big, huge hit, and, uh, Ashley Judd was a really wonderful, great person to work with. And Tommy Lee Jones. And, yeah. Tommy Lee Jones is Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones, you see up there on the screen, that's the Tommy Lee Jones you see. He, he's a neat guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, he said, he tell me he's going home and say, come to Jesus Jones story. He said, I get, when I go back where I live, I get back, <laughs> and I drive up to the gate, and I, I open the gate, and I drive for an hour. And then I'm home. <laughs> That's how <laughs> big branch it is. <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones is something I've heard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, but they're all good. I mean, they're just really good actors, you know. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, Bruce Greenwood, as uh, another actor, was in, in um, um, Double Jeopardy with me. And uh, mm-hmm. Annabelle Kish, Annabeth Kish. Oh, I had worked for about. about that it was about the second time I worked her. And I just saw her again recently. I mean, I first worked for her, and she was about like 12 years old on some Walt Disney film with, with about 
talk about the old times, and, and it was it was incredible because you know I mean I was just a kid when I worked with her. Now she's a mom, and she's a beautiful and great. She's a wonderful actress. Yes, and um, yeah, I just love the. When I'm older, I want to be an actor. That's why I've done this radio show for four years and got actors experiences and input in many things um well, i was nice because you i think you have to talk to them about not just acting i think and other stuff you get to see that a lot of them are pretty normal i mean you must have found that out i mean just yeah just sometimes real people are just doing a great job of what they do yeah you know when i first started this i was scared to death to talk to some of these actors i'm like because these are big <laughs> names you know oh no if i mess up you know something <laughs> but you learn oh there are there are people like that but then those people don't hey, i like that that are actors they're ceos and they even jobs and they, they think of very important of themselves and you you know certainly being an actor is a certain amount of ego you have to have a kind of ego when you're up there if you let the fear uh, I call it going to the dark side. If you go to the dark side <laughs> situation, you're going to lose, right? <laughs> you got to say that, hey, I'm here for a reason. They wouldn't have cast me or in this thing if they didn't think I could do it. And it's hard to, you know, um, but the more and more uh, stars, I mean, I worked with um, you know, Al Pacino and Bo Derek and uh, <laughs> I guess a bunch of people. Um, and they're just like normal people, you know. The only difference between me and them is the zeros at the end of their checks. You know, <laughs> they really are quite down to earth sometimes. You know, yeah. and they really enjoy their fans too. That's really interesting. That's a very interesting thing. You know, yes. You know, you're nothing without your fans. Yeah. You know, you got to stop. You got you gotta say hello. And you got to you know give a few, sign a few autographs and stuff like that. Is that important? Means something to them. <laughs> yeah. And um, I've just loved doing this, you know, and I hope to keep doing this radio show. And uh, mm-hmm. and I'm... It's, that would be nice. That's great. It's, you're certainly doing us all a favor <laughs> because you're getting our names up there and you're getting people to listen to us to remember who we are. And that's really an important thing, you know, to remember that guy. Oh, the guy. Next time you see film, somebody's name, you think, oh, geez, I like that guy. I'm going to... You know, it's like... When you hear a band, when you used to buy records, you know, you hear one, one tune, I'm thinking, oh, I like that style of music, uh, you know. And that's sometimes later on, you, you try to do that later on. You try to do movies that um, you start to owe it to people, you know. Um, yeah. You know, that um, this is what I'm presenting to you. I, I trust that this is good material. And sometimes you go wrong, you know, so a bunch of talk about the movie Mother that's going on now and stuff and everything, you know. So you never know what you're doing. You, you might be thinking that you're creating some really beautiful art, and then somehow mm-hmm. people don't buy it. And then uh, maybe 30 years later, it's rediscovered. Yeah. Some of those great movies and plays and everything. When you look at it again, The Shining was like that. Did you ever see The Shining um, film? With um, King movie? Jack Nicholson um, and with Jack Nicholson? Yes, yes. Yes. When I first saw that movie, I, I hated it. <laughs> because I just read the book and it was nothing like the book. Yeah. And I couldn't accept that. I wanted the book and then later on I saw it and I was able to see what he was trying to do. This was his interpretation of the book. It's like watching Shakespeare, right? <laughs> uh, there was his own interpretation and I really enjoyed it once I, I, I saw that again. Because I didn't have my back up waiting for it. You know? Yeah. I find a lot of if uh, movies are based on books, it gets a lot of criticism, you know, because they say it's not. Well, it's a um, hard thing because it's impossible. Any movie, look, just think how long it took you to read that damn thing. And think, <laughs> and think how long a movie is, right? And that's why, you know, I, I've just, um, it was really interesting because I was in the original movie, It, and uh, uh, I met this fellow um, on Facebook, and he was coming up to Vancouver, and he was uh, one to um, have an interview with me because he was really fascinated by it, you know, and especially with it coming out. And I went to see the, the new it, which was uh, uh, great. And it certainly was tour to the book and everything. But when I did it, it was a, a two-part movie on TV. Yeah. And you couldn't show all the things that were in that book, even on TV. TV's come a long way, too. But um, it's, uh, you know, he's going to be making 
hit and then it hit two and it hit three just to really encompass. I mean, that's a heavy book. That's a, I think it's about, I don't know, it's a quarter pounder. It has about 1,200 pages or something. <laughs> yeah. And he wanted to get in for your fans as much as possible. I think he did a remarkable job with it. That this new fellow brought that movie out. Yeah. Well, um, Mr. Brazo, we have reached our end of our interview. It was a pleasure talking to you. Oh, it's a real pleasure talking to you, Trey. You know, all the best to you, and thank you very much for doing what you do. It's a really important thing, and um, I hope some more buddies of mine get a chance to just talk to you. Yeah, I have one of your... I think I told you this on Facebook yesterday. Um, I have one of your friends. He's a fellow... Uh, a Vancouver actor as well, Timothy yeah. Timothy Weber. I don't know if you've... That's right. The last time we've been in a couple movies together, all we remember, one was way up north somewhere. We were in a bush or something. I was a, a bush pilot or something. But we, we need to see each other more and we run into auditions, you know. <laughs> and we always go, did you get that last job? And the thing is, no, I didn't. Well, who got it then? <laughs> <laughs> great guy. Yeah, and... um. I've interviewed people from around America, Canada, you know. That's wonderful. It's been wonderful. And with my, I'm 17 and I have high-functioning autism and I would have never thought I would be here talking to many people. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. So you're 17. That's wonderful. Well, it's nice at 17 years old that you have found what you really like. And that you started working on it already, and this is wonderful, you know. And you know, with autism, yeah. it's, it's another thing too. It's like everybody has an idea of what autism is. Yes. And it's a hard thing. It's you're the fellow with autism, you know. Mm -hmm. And you got to just, you know, it's all about the well. I'm the guy here, right? Mm -hmm. I've got to find out that's more, wasn't what it is, but how I can deal with this, and I want to live my life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what it's all about to me. And sometimes people forget about that doctors, you know, and different things. Are they, everybody is so opinionated about something, about what's right, you know, when it comes to things. But then they forget about, is the guy who's sitting there in the corner, you know. And so I'm, I'm glad that you were able to, to just do these things and to put and say, damn you, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to do what I want to do. And I'm going to talk to these people and, and we, a lot of people will be too scared to do it. And, you know, a major thing you talked about being scared about talking to people. A thing that always scared me was um, <laughs> being worried about being in front of people and just talking. That's <laughs> like the number one fear, I think, in the world. Just having to be myself and talk, I was just absolutely crushed and frightened. And I was, I was blah, 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 you know. <laughs> I went out to myself. I, I, I didn't like myself enough to be able to talk, right? So, you it was a pleasure talking to you and um best success for you in the future thank you so much Trey. okay bye-bye bye-bye and that was jay brazo mr jay brazo actor canadian actor and all that one of a man he was um talking to i was simply overjoyed talking to him i was laughing he was laughing Join us next Thursday as I interview actor, voice actor, writer, director, producer, playwright, woo, David Du Bois, Mr. David Du Bois. Thank you, and God bless. Good night.